YouTubers, welcome back. And today we're talking about cylinder heads for Mr. Sparkles and the 400 cubic inch small block Chevy that I'm putting together. And this is something that I'm sure a lot of you guys overlooked and didn't really know too much about until the recent years. Like me, whenever you get into doing cylinder heads yourself and putting them together and checking everything out, you definitely learn a little things along the way. So I'm going to teach you guys those things that I have learned. And there probably will be a lot of people who are going to say I'm an idiot and I'm doing things wrong, but that's okay. They don't have any YouTube videos most of the time. And if you had a YouTube video and you called me idiot and you had a bunch of stuff you did on dinos and all that, then you have the authority to call me an idiot because you probably know a lot more than me. But if you're some guy with one subscriber and one video that is something that has nothing to do with cars, then don't talk to me about this stuff because I'm telling you, it's good information and you want to see it. very important to be fueled up to be creative I don't endorse any of this but it's my channel so I do what I want all right so where else should we start first well let's work away from the bottom to the top so the one thing I'm keeping from these AFR heads I'm not sure if I'll use them. These are the shims. This is where you set your spring height to. And right here we have the stock locator. That be the stock locator. And what I have right here is a prime example of what happens to a stock locator that doesn't have the correct. Well, correct is kind of a, a loose word. In my opinion, not the correct clearance to keep that spring, the bottom of the spring, from jumping around in the seat right here. So if we put this right here, this locator in the bottom of this, watch this. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Now, let's look at what happens when it jiggles too much. You see that? There's a piece missing. Luckily, it was still on there, so it didn't make its way through the motor and cause any damage. This is how it should look. And I'm sure some of you guys are probably like, well, I thought you said AFR makes a good head or everyone says they make a good head. They do. They make a great head. But you got to remember, this is still a mass production head. They have to have locators and spring packages that work across a wide variety of camshafts and specified lift so they can sell them at a decent price and they're to make every single head with a uh, custom tailored cam packages the time it takes for a person to do that and put it out the door they're going to cost a lot more money i mean there's no doubt that afr has some of the best shaped combustion chambers and intake ports out of any head in there for you know standard small block chevy stuff they just make great power and they work but they still they got to make money so they got to have you know components that they can use across a wide variety of parts from the small block chevy small block ford ls all that stuff so they make something that they can buy a lot of and work across a lot of platforms and i'm not saying that this guy right here with the broken um, locator is going to happen to all their heads it just happened to me and i'm just using this as an example of what you want to look for and why i I'm going with a different locator and retainer package. So let's talk about that next. So the locator I'm using, you notice I uh, beveled it. I'll talk about that later. I know this is where people call me an idiot, but it's whatever. So if you look at, like I said before, this locator right here, when it goes in, it's gonna go into the inner spring and it's a, a jiggle jiggle. So this locator, that I'm going to use is going to eliminate that jiggle. See how, how tight it fits in the spring, the bottom? Boom. Look at that. No jiggle. It fits in there nice and tight. 
So that will keep this spring from jumping around when it's in there. See this? Every four, look at that. Very little movement. So there's a reason that AFR did that. You know, it's because they, like I said before, it's like they got to make money and they got to work for a lot of different packages. So if you look at this guy right here, if I put it in there, they can shim this up. See this right here in this section right here? You've got all this right here for shimming abilities on different packages. And of course, this one right here, I beveled it. So let me go ahead and grab a one that's not beveled. I'll show you why I beveled this and what it does. Let's remove this modified one I got right here. This is the one how it came from comp. But if you notice, your seal around your valve stem goes down to this mark right here. So like, oh, well it goes down there, what's that? Now, if I were to take the shims that came stock with this head that gave this spring 700 lift, I am now at the extent that I can shim that spring. See this right here? If I were to go up any more, that means it would be bringing this seal up farther off the guide. I don't want that because in the past, I have brought these seals up trying to spring shim packages and this seal has made its way off the guide and got munched up by the spring and then it goes to the motor. So, you know, you can get away with that a lot, just like AFR says you can get away with these, but I'm the guy who always has these issues. I don't have that good luck like some people, which is why I am doing this to the new locators. So if I want to shim it up more than stock, what AFR has it, I can throw a boatload of them on there. And then throw the locator on there and be able to, boom, put this down in there and have clearance for this guy to go all the way down. So that's why I am taking these guys right here and beveling them so I can shim them as much as I want because I don't need a 700 lift cam for the street. And the closer you can put this spring to bind on a smaller cam, the more valve control you will have. All right, so going to the springs and Basically, this, I'm using the exact same spring. This is made by TrickFlow. Uh, a couple numbers are shifted around, but when I measured the springs, they're pretty much the exact same spring. And your spring package is going to be based off of whatever your cam is and whatever your needs are you want to rev to. So we won't get into that too much because there is a lot of variables that go into that. But there's one thing when it comes to retainers. Now, the retainer that Comp had, sorry, the retainer that AFR had, I should just stop, shouldn't I? The retainer that AFR had was fine. I mean, uh, I, I didn't see anything that was really a big deal about it. It had, you know, good control on the top, so we're not worried about that. But what is more important than just the retainer and its fitment is going to be how light it is and what you have to do to get your rocker to clear the spring. And when I say springs, this section right here, as this gets larger right here, it eats into the section of your rocker if you're running a stud mount rocker like I am, not shaft mount rockers, which are more expensive, which go into a whole nother level. And once you go to shaft mount rockers, you pretty much don't have to worry about your, your springs binding up on your rockers because you have a lot more clearance. But on a stud mount rocker, there is so much clearance that you can work with as your spring right here gets larger. And I'll get a close up of this real quick. Hopefully you guys can see that, but I can see it here in the camera. But you can see a difference in height as this retainer is, as opposed to this one. And you can see a difference in size. Now this one doesn't clear the entire spring, but there's definitely enough in there to keep it on the spring. And they both have about the same movement 
This one attaches to more to the inside spring, which is very securely bound to the outer spring. So it'll have about the same movement. The AFR is more tightly bound to the outside one. Like I said, uh, nothing wrong with this. All I'm doing is going for clearance. So one thing I had to do with these uh, retainers are right here that came originally with the AFR heads so that this rocker would clear the retainer right here. I had to use lashing caps, which is uh, these guys right here. And luckily, since I'm using the exact same locks on this new retainer, if I do have an issue with clearance, I can still use the lashing caps, which go right there which bring it up just a little bit more than if you didn't have it. And right there we have the lashing caps, which should give me all the clearance if I don't have enough clearance without them. Well, so we started from the bottom and made it to the top and now we're here. So hopefully that helps a lot of you guys out in choosing your spring retainer shims or whatever you want for your small block chevy cylinder heads and this has a, a lot to do with pretty much all small block chevy cylinder heads be different sizes and the valve guides and the valves and all that other stuff but the same knowledge can carry over to basically any cylinder head so hopefully that helps my fellow diy guys out and with that said in the next video we'll be talking about cleaning and why a lot of places, when you take your cylinder head to a machine shop, why it costs 300 something dollars, 300 to like, you know, $400, depending on your location, to get your cylinder head cleaned and also your, you know, valve job done, because it is definitely a time consuming process. In the next video, we will be covering that. But with that said, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and that like button. And until next time, peace.